one thing about being neurodivergent and being first told that you have anxiety and depression is that it can feel really um, gas lighting <laughs> um, to have people say like it's all just in your head all your friends don't hate you it's actually gonna be just fine you are gonna be okay right like when we skip so quickly to um, that the reality is that everything's fine but everything in your head is telling you that it's not and your body is picking up on real sensory inputs that are saying something feels unsafe or at the very least uncomfortable. Um, so when we first need to validate that, right? We can't just skip right to, it is going to be fine. I mean, maybe it really is, truly. I get you. And there are times where we do have to bring reality checks into it, but we first need to validate that um, the person has a reason to feel what they're feeling. Now, you didn't hear me say they have every right to feel it and they get to just double, triple down on it. But what I am saying is they have a right, there's a reason that they're feeling what they're feeling. They do have a right to feel this for a second, for it to be a flag, a little indicator that goes off in our brain and body of like, hey, I'm picking up on something. I want to first validate to my system, thank you for bringing that information to me. And one analogy I like to use with the anxiety aspect of things is if I, it's an analogy I use is if I'm walking with a friend towards a big dark forest and it's really dark in there and those trees are really big and we're walking towards it very confidently right so if I say to my friend hey I'm really nervous about going into this forest right now like it's about to get dark out here like what's that what are we doing and if they're like no everything's fine everything's okay whatever don't worry about it I'm like, oh my gosh, this person has no idea why I'm afraid. They don't get it. Oh my gosh, we're doomed. I'm now more afraid and more alert than any than than I was before I brought this up. So that's notice that dismissing my fear did not help me. It made it worse. But if I say to my friend as we're walking towards this forest, hey, I'm nervous about going into this forest, and now they respond with oh, absolutely, I get your fear. And they take off their backpack and they're like, hey, I've got this bag and it's got flashlights and a baton and here's our GPS and I've got friends meeting us in there and we've got like, there's string lights once we get in there with the lighting our way, whatever. Here's a map. We've got, we've got these things and we can handle it. Now, because they validated that I had a right to be afraid and then told me how we're going to handle these things, why I'm still safe, even though there is a real reason for me to feel there's a threat, this actually helped calm me down and allowed me to approach this situation and actually engage with it. But the whole point of this is also just because there's a threat in the forest doesn't mean I don't go in there, but it does mean I need to be prepared and feel prepared in order to be able to engage with that adventure journey that we're about to go on. These are good things to be aware of when we're talking to our anxiety. If I just go, oh, whatever, everything's fine. My system doesn't trust me. It doesn't believe me. And so I need to find a way to be able to validate the fear while telling it how we're going to handle it if it comes up. So if I'm walking towards a big dark forest, I'm afraid of that forest. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So, hey, I have an anxiety about going into that social situation. Yeah, that makes sense. Social situations are draining for us. They're hard. It makes a lot of sense. That's going to take us a lot of energy. Sometimes people aren't super nice and we might take, we might have to like hold a boundary. Okay, yeah, it makes a lot of sense why my nervous system is on edge telling me, hey, there's information I need you to know. So first, validate. There's a reason this is here. Does that mean I should not go talk to somebody ever? No, that's not what that means. But it does mean that I got to validate it first and then take my, take my backpack with me. All right, I'm going to breathe. I can rehearse before I get there. I can practice what I want to say. If I need to leave the situation, I can. This one is very important too. If I don't feel like I have an exit strategy, I won't want to go in because I'm going to feel trapped. So this is another thing. Validate. I need to know that there's a way I could get out if I needed to. Is that one of the best ways to help me feel comf com comfortable and confident in actually approaching? So validate the fear first, then tell it how we're going to handle these things if they show up. We got this. I don't want us to just cross our fingers and be like, oh man, I hope that I feel great about this tomorrow. And then I'll be able to go to that. No, we got to know, okay, nope, it's going to be a scary space. That forest will have some kind of threat inside of it. And here's how I'm going to keep myself safe. Here's how I'm going to navigate it. And this is why it's going to be okay. This is a much more, we can actually control this type of thing. Like I said, instead of just waiting and hoping, maybe I'll feel different about it. Maybe it'll be okay. Maybe I won't get, maybe the thing I'm afraid of happening won't happen. That's not what I'm trying to hope for. 
nor am I trying to say, yep, I'm doomed. It's that middle ground. Acknowledge that there's a, your body has a reason it's telling you this message. And we'll get to parts of self because that's going to be an important thing here in this journey is how we talk with the different parts of ourself that are giving us information and how parts of ourself helps us in our mental health journey of holding balance and compassion for ourselves and for others.